<laughs> All right, let's call to order the uh, regular board meeting for September 17, 2013 of the Batavia Park District. Shall I please call the roll? Tillman. Here. Gray. Here. Boyles. Here. Riley. Here. Callahan. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, any items to be added, changed, removed, or changed on the agenda? Uh, yes, I would like to add personnel under 17 executive session. Okay, 2C1. All right. Okay. So do we have to, is it, that's not when we had an executive session, it's just to find the purpose of, so we don't have to amend that. Yeah, we'll do that when we uh, go into executive Okay. All right, so uh, next item on the agenda is the uh, consent agenda. So I would entertain a motion to establish the consent agenda as follows. <laughs> Approval of the minutes for the regular board meeting of August 27th, 2013. Approval of the minutes for the executive session of August 27, 2013. Approval of the paid expenditures, unpaid expenditures, <laughs> treasurer's report, purchases. Resolution 220, notice of appointment of authorized IMRF agent. Approval of resolution number 221, authorization of adoption of plan, reinstate VALIC, and ordinance number 326, uh, proper, or surplus property. So moved. Second. Motion by Tillman, second by Gray. Any further discussion? Shall I please call the roll? Tillman. Aye. Gray. Aye. Boyles. Aye. Riley. Aye. Callahan. Aye. Motion carries. So I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as established. So moved. Second. Motion by Tillman, second by Gray. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Welcome. We're excited to get rid of the surplus property. <laughs> we have a lot of tables. <laughs> All right, um, so next item on the agenda is item number six, guests, matters from the public. Anyone wishing to address the board this evening? Seeing none, moving on. Next item is item number seven, matters of the commissioners. Anyone wishing to address public tonight? And just briefly, I'd like to uh, congratulate the, uh, the staff and the Civil War reenactors mm -hmm. uh, last weekend. I think they did a great job. And to Carla, uh, Carrie, great uh, advertising, getting the word out. So Allison, you know, all, all the, uh, I, think, I think we had really good partners. They did, really did a good job. And in, in addition to just walking around, you know, when you, when you just walk around and you ask questions, but they had, e each of them had like a little history that they told you about. And so it was a lot more interactive and uh, informative. So if you didn't go last year or this year, be sure to go next year. Hmm. I happen to be driving by at the crack of dawn and they uh, did spend the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they sure did. <laughs> I night saw it. <laughs> really cool. Yeah, that was, mm -hmm. that, that was cool. Great. Thanks. Anyone else? All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is correspondence. And we had two pieces of correspondence, uh, a letter from NRPA and a letter from our cleaning service, Imperial Service Systems. So please put those on file. The most exciting time of our meeting is item number nine, and that is announcements. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Hello, Batavia. Moms Son Wagon Rides are returning Thursday, September 26th. Moms and their sons, ages 3 to 12, are invited to enjoy a special night at West Main Community Park from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Wagon rides will begin at 6 p.m. Dinner will be uh, provided, followed by campfire time and s'mores for dessert. Storytelling has been added this year from 6.15 to 6.45 p.m. The cost is $10 for residents, $12 for Batavia non-residents, and $13 for non-residents. Don't miss out on this unique experience. Calling all volunteers. We're currently seeking individuals or groups interested in helping out at the fourth annual Haunted Quarry. This is a great opportunity for service organizations. It takes place October 18th, 19th, 25th, and 26th from 7 to 10 p.m. at Hall Quarry Beach. 
channel your inner ghost or goblin and volunteer to help out. Proceeds from this event benefit the Batavia Teen Center. Contact Kristen Bykowski at kristinb at bataviaparks.org for more details. Show off your skills at this weekend's skateboard competition at Blackard Skate and Bike Park. Registration starts at 10 a.m. Competition starts at noon. Categories include beginner, intermediate, expert, and best trick. The cost is $15 on the day of the competition or $10 in advance. The event also includes a free skate, music, and concessions. We'll see you there. For more information on any of these events, please visit our website at bataviaparks.org or call 630-879-5235. Thank you very much. Okay, next time on the agenda is affiliate reports. We do not have any affiliate reports this evening, but we do encourage our affiliates to join us at our regularly scheduled board meetings so they can give us updates on their activities. We're certainly welcome to have them, so please keep that in mind. Uh, next time on the agenda is staff reports. Who wants to start? I guess I'll Jim. I'm in the line. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Imagine how that works. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you all knew if you haven't driven by um, the 103 South River lot, a lot has happened in the last two days, and they are getting ready to pave tomorrow, provided we don't have any rain, uh, heavy rain tonight and into tomorrow morning. They should be done with the pathway paving actually by noon tomorrow. Great. They said it's a half day paving project. Then they will be back in. The rest of the crew will be back in to do the restoration, et cetera, on the turf. So it really went quickly. We knew it would once it got going. And uh, it's it's kind of exciting to see it finally after it, we took so long to obtain the house and then got it gone. And now we're finally getting our pathway connection. Great. Thanks for the update. Anyone else? Um, I would just like to update you on um, the CAFR, which is the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Um, uh, Matt Barn is here to speak a little bit later about the, about the um, CAFR and any questions you have, which was, it was also included in your packet. Um, so I'm kind of going to defer some of my discussion when he gets up and talks. All right. Uh, I just want to give a heads up to uh, Batavia Youth Football League out at uh, Prairie Path Park, the fields that you guys have your games and practices on. We did do uh, some core verification and um, we left the cores on the field and that would help with uh, reducing some of the compaction and then provide some of the root um, from the grass to help regenerate uh, new turf. Uh, it, we didn't get it like an invasion of geese and, and, and that's what it will look like, but uh, uh, we're very excited. We were able to uh, uh, demo a piece of equipment from one of our vendors um, for free and it in turn was able to, uh, with the rain that we had over the weekend, get great uh, levels of penetration for that highly compacted area. So pretty excited. Mm, great. Thank you. And we're also looking forward to resting those fields. Uh, next year so that way you know, they'll be plush for the ball next fall thanks to uh, jeff and ryan for working that schedule out for me yeah let's give everyone the insider scoop on a living social deal that we're going to be running for haunted quarry um it's going to run september 28th for about a week or so it'll be two admissions for the price of one basically so keep an eye out on living social for that um and then also um, i'm excited to announce that we are on pinterest now so uh, to help with revenue facilities or the rental facilities sorry um you know like if somebody is having a wedding reception at shannon hall we have pictures of the the one the photographer came in and we did a setup of an actual reception so people can visualize and see what the interior looks like set up um, and then just boards for fitness and for baby showers and things like that to to give people ideas for what they could do um, if they host at our facilities so. great idea cool. Bork, any questions nope. i have one eric on yours you had um under miscellaneous currently working on south plaza landscape design and plant installation project mm -hmm. what is that um <coughs> we are going to be thank you rita um installing some perennials this year uh, we uh, did some annual plantings to provide some color uh, we identified that uh, we needed to do a little facelift in that area Mm -hmm. So um, Jim and Allison and I uh, worked together on some different funding uh, opportunities for that. Uh, we worked with Upland Design, got a phenomenal design, and uh, 
So we're creeping forward on, on that. Awesome. We're looking for an install in November. Primarily plant material, we're not reconfiguring the- No, sir. No, no, no. Yeah, no. okay. But we're keeping yeah. No, I, I, right. I just wasn't Just, uh, we Good. had a lot of plant material that um, outlived its its usefulness and then uh, some of it passed away and, and was looking pretty sparse. It's been sure. 11 years. Oh, hard, I, I know. Yeah. You know, it, hard it to believe, so fast. but- yeah. Well, and the city yeah. was gracious and they removed the sculptures that were rusting um, and that were in that area. So we were able to actually do a lot more with bedding. And, yeah. um, great. So it's going to look phenomenal. I look forward to seeing it. The colors really pop. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. So we're excited. Thank you for asking. Sure. Okay, uh, next item on my agenda is executive director's report. Allison, any updates for us? Yep. Yeah, um, well, you received probably the pretty lengthy uh, board brief, but um, just a reminder to please respond to my email about changing the fiscal year mm -hmm. if you're in favor of it being um, as is, or if you like, you know, we would like to move to the calendar year. Um, I included a lot of the advantages, and um, you know, certainly, uh, <clears throat> we really feel like from a staff standpoint that it's the district's benefit. Um, we can get more competitive bidding with construction projects. Um, it, it just synchronizes things a lot more. So, so please respond to the email um, so I can get a consensus, and then also to let you know that. Um, I will be sending your way another email um, inquiring about setting up a special board meeting in early November. Uh, sorry, another meeting. But, um, but just like we did last year, it was very helpful um, prior to the tax levy um, to discuss the budget, to discuss capital projects, um, some tax levy ideas. And now that we have a director of finance in place, um, we can add another dimension to that meeting. So the recommendation is to is to move from our current fiscal year to a calendar year. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean that's a staff recommendation. Anyway. Correct. Okay. Very good. Okay. Board, any comments, questions mm -hmm. for Allison? Why 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 is the change been uh, requested now rather than a couple of years ago or whenever? Is just uh, things are just coming together or just thought it was a good idea now? Um, actually, it's it's been something that, you know, even in a department head status, I thought was a a sound idea. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of park districts. I mean, I'm not sure if Naperville, Gary, if, are they calendar are they, year as well? Yeah. Right. Switched over a number of years. <clears throat> um, because a lot of a lot of districts uh, have the May 1st through April 30th fiscal year because. Um, you know, back in the day, the grant opportunities or the funding from the state would come at a set time and you would be able to, to plan ahead. Um, and now, I mean, Rita, do you want to chime in? Is there? There are other things like, um, for example, IMRF, uh, the rate structure that they give us, their effective dates are through a calendar year. So we can also budget that significantly easier. I don't have to make a guess at what the next year, what next year's rate would be. Um, also with GSB 6869 coming up, um, also ties into pensions and IMRF, and because they only do a actuarial, actuarial study every other year and on December 31st, that will make that implementation significantly easier as well. Okay. All right, thanks. And to the point with new board members like Tara, um, they would have more of a say in the budget process, whereas a lot of times they, they've already, by the time that they start, it's the budget has just been approved and they really don't get a feel for it. So how does that work? You know, because statutorily we have a target date to approve our budget by, right? The first quarter of your year, whatever your year. Whatever the year is. Yeah. So this would just mean that our budget cycle would move from? May, June, and July. To Jan January, February, March. March. But this way you're only budgeting once. You have to prepare essentially a budget in order to develop your levy request by the end of December. So you've got staff running around trying to pull guessing numbers together, including the last half of this overlapping plus budget, plus then the next one um, for the, of the first half of the next budget. And then six months later, you got them doing it again. Sometimes there's a benefit to that, but mostly staff's got other things to do. So we're big fans of the calendar year fiscal year thing. And um, and so if the board, the consensus of the board is to change to a calendar year, then that would make next year our stump year. So that would be May 1st through December 31st. So it'd be a very short budget season. And that's what I was going to ask you, I guess, uh, about the stump year. Would everything go into a stump year? All the scorecards, everything else would roll up into that 
condensed year, right? And then we'd start fresh January. Yeah, yeah, you right. could look at it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I just want to make sure that we weren't, I mean, because it, it just, if you're, if, right, but if, I, I think it would make sense if we're going to evaluate folks mm -hmm. based on the budget as well, mm -hmm. then I think we should uh, stump all the scorecards into the, the budget that is mm -hmm. the short one, and then start everybody, everything's fresh. So then it would drive January performance 1st. appraisals mm -hmm. right. at a different time as well. Right, I mean, it just, I think everything should be coordinated that way if we're gonna go that way, and just it let it flow and, you know, organically from that. Mm -hmm. That really doesn't affect our program cycles at all. No. Right. Actually, I mean, on, it, it on it Jeff's behalf, because we easier. have made, had this discussion, is it is actually significantly easier because okay. some of those, um, mm -hmm. the, the spring book is split between two years. Mm -hmm. So doing the deferrals and everything else is, is a lot different. Um, there are very few that actually fall between the two that start in December and end in January. So it actually does for programming and make it significantly like easier. Sure. Right. The, the winter, the winter session is one of the smaller ones as yeah, far as right. things that are split over. Okay. So that would, mm -hmm. And with the Hull Cray Beach, that's a little goofy too because mm -hmm. so much of the preseason work that we right. do. Occurs in the, yeah, yep. this year. So what does the board need to do uh, to garner consensus for this? Is there a formal action we have to take yeah, at some point? Yeah, you'll do it by ordinance. By ordinance mm -hmm. next month if we choose to do so. So if we reply to you and everybody decides to do it. I can put it on the agenda for next month. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay, so next item on the agenda is presentations. Uh, today, uh, Matt Bauer, ba sorry, Barron from Lauterbach and Amon is here to discuss the 2012-2013 um, CAFR that is in front of you and that was in the board packet for today. And as PDF, as requested from last month, there's no paper for it. Nice. <laughs> no bushes were, were killed in this mm -hmm. process. No bushes. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, I was the manager for the audit this year. Uh, I was coming to present. Um, we provided the Park District uh, an unqualified opinion again this year, which is our highest opinion that we provide. Essentially, that means that these financial statements that you have are free of material misstatement. You can rest, rest assured that the numbers within it are accurate. Um, I brought the copies with, uh, with me tonight, and they look beautiful. Rita, your husband, I heard, yeah. designed it, so they're here to be passed out. Um, I also, we will be going for the uh, CAFR award again this year, which we received, or the Park District received last year. So we see no reason why that will not happen again this year. Um, we also provided to the Park District a management letter with a, a couple of management letter comments. Um, these included just a heads up on a Gatsby pronouncement that is going to be forthcoming next year. It's not really going to affect you guys too much, but we just wanted to give you a heads up that it's there. Um, one of your funds was out of balance when we arrived for the audit, so that's like an automatic uh, management letter comment for you to be aware of when uh, we see that. And last one, um, we noticed that the capital asset threshold is only a thousand dollars, which that is very low compared to what we kind of see in the rest of the park district world. We'd recommend bumping that up so you're not having to track just such immaterial things by the finance staff. Um, other two management letter comments that we had previously were implemented this year, so um, they will be removed from the letter going forward. Um, and I guess if I'll open it up for any questions that you guys might have. Where is the management letter? What page? Um, it's harder when you have it. It looks like this. Um, I'm not sure what your package looks the, what's like. The talking, what's the title for? It's called management letter. Oh, well, you should make it more complicated. <laughs> 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 I don't know what page it would be. Hold on. Well, in the front section, page 7, it says management, but it doesn't, I don't no. Is it the management Keep discussion going. and analysis? You're probably like page 200. Because <laughs> this alone is 128. I don't have 200 pages here. <laughs> I know. What's the page sorry. number at the bottom? No, I'm sorry. I'm talking about the page number on the top. Sorry. 
PDF page number. Oh, the PDF um, going page. Oh. The PDFs. Because you, book, you bookmarked the it, the right? Bottom, there isn't, because this is a separate document from oh. this. Oh, that's why we, okay. Like Rita, did you, I think, the, didn't you bookmark it in the PDF? Page no, 61, Page 82 is the last page of the financials. Okay. Yeah. Which, that's Keep going. report, not PDF. Yeah, it is. 82, Keep going. and then we've got policy. We have 82 hmm. pages of the report and yeah. policy. It's not after, it's not, it's okay. not on here. Hmm. There are copies in the box, I guess, too, that uh, brought for the board. Okay. We'll get a copy. Thank you. Any uh, questions, board? Matt? So, Matt, as a comparative to last year in your um, comments section. It is in your packet, page 114. Uh -oh. Oh. Management discussion and analysis. No. Oh. No. 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 That's, no, that's, that's, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> management. Management's discussion. It's very good. That's what I thought it was. Right. Come on, Derek, you've seen enough of these uh, cameras, <laughs> you know what these MBAs are. <laughs> Um, but my, I guess my question is, um, in terms of the changes that you've seen, or in your, you have management discussion, I think it's called on here, management discussion analysis, mm -hmm. yeah. and you, you have some financial highlights. Could you go yes. through those for us just a little bit and give us some indication as to why, I mean, is that just identification of fund and the differences between yes. last year and this year? Essentially, so in all of your cappers that you will have, um, the management discussion analysis is a standard for all reports and essentially is a summary of everything that is in here. Okay. So if you read through the management discussion analysis, you will get basically the Cliff Notes version of everything that is talked about within the CAFR. So basically this is a pretty standard template of how like funds to hit comparing to budget, comparing to prior year, how the fund balances change. It's um, essentially, I don't wanna say cookie cutter, but it's pretty close to being, going from one park district to the next of what you wanna make sure that you talk about mm -hmm. within every management uh, discussion analysis. So from yours, um, you know, that first page of it, the MBNA page one, like how it talks about, you have in the financial highlights of how things have changed from the prior year, um, where you've had increases basically across the board when it comes to your government-wide financial statements and, you know, most notably in your rec fund and your general fund. Rita, does that match what you and I have? What's that? Wait. This is a separate, do separate document. Hang on. Okay. But if you'd like me to, I can go over this. If you want me to kind of. I think an overview would be great. Mm -hmm. More than mm -hmm. seeing it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the first uh, comment is there isn't. As Matt had stated, there's a new um, Gatsby Statement 61 talking about the reporting entity that is, does not um, include us, but for some municipalities and park and uh, libraries, this could possibly be an issue. It depends on how Gatsby defines a separate entity, um, like tax levy and budgets, things like that, that are separate. Um, for some places are not. You obviously are a separate board. You have full control over your tax levy. You levy your own dollars. You levy your own debt. So therefore. Nothing's going to change for us. Um, number two is trial balances out of balance. They noticed that the trial balance was off by 13,437. Um, 
when I finally was able to take a look at it, I noticed that um, the information from the prior year was incorrect starting at the first of the year. So I guess I made the assumption that everything rolling forward was right, but it was not. So that has been corrected and adjusted. And the third one was the capital asset threshold that um, I asked Jamie actually to put this in here because I have a work plan goal to, to go through this, increase the, increase the dollar amount because $1,000 is too low. And you can spend $1,000 in a laptop and it's just a lot more um, management to, to go through all that and especially um, too just it, it's also to cover some costs that are so immaterial like you know you could pay $1,000 for a door. Well, it's really more of a, of a maintenance item, not a capitalized item, even though it, you know, it looks kind of like a capital item, it's really not. So what Jim and I are gonna work on together is actually getting that policy up to probably $5,000. I'm gonna have his assistance because he knows all the capital stuff. Um, kind of going through all the detail currently, and then we will make the adjustments for the end of this year. So we will talk about an adjustment that you'll see at the end of this year. Because of that, it's not a bad thing. It's just because we are changing the way we are reporting out our capital assets. So it's actually just going to be easier. And we'll talk about that next year when those financial statements come out. And I'll explain it again and remind everyone what we, just, what we decided to do. OK. Can we go back to that? Yeah. Because I'm trying to reconcile that with what I'm reading here. That Which one? So you're going to range it from 2500 up to 50000 but you were just saying that you want to make the minimum 5000 Am I reading? What am I reading wrong here? Well, th what they're what they're suggesting is something between twenty-five and fifty. Okay. And I'm choosing five thousand. Okay. Because just want to make sure. It's, that, okay. Yeah. These families normally go higher to not cover cars, but because it's know, saying by category that, here, is is it possible to do? I mean, uh, or are you just going to go flat five thousand? Flat five thousand. And just anything okay. above. Yeah. Right. And which obviously covers almost any capital project that's done, and right. most anything that is at least of value. Okay, any other questions? Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Um, with, with Rita, your staff did a great job again this year, or I guess here was the first time for you this year, but you did a great job. Audit went very smooth, no hiccups with the changeover. So I uh, just want to say thank you. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Good job. Very good. This just goes on file, correct? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. okay. okay, next item on the agenda is uh, old business policy discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. So this is the second reading for the per diem policy okay. and the hiring policy. All right, so let's take these separately. Let's start with... For the hiring policy, we do have our human resources manager in the audience tonight in case there are questions. Okay, let's work these in reverse. So, uh, board, any issues with second reading of the hiring policy? And Dirk, you've had an opportunity to review these? Yeah, the, uh, I mean, I only have a lot of questions. Uh, well, the, you made a choice on each. Some places it's mandatory that you get the lesser of car <coughs> So, for example, when conferences house. are in Minneapolis or St. Louis, some people will decide to drive, even though that's more expensive than an airline flight. Um, here, your policy says you're encouraged to do it. I just wanted you to be aware that you give them that option because sometimes it's a matter of timing and flexibility. You don't have the time to drive or uh, The other one um, on the was you're committed to hiring only through Appletrack. Having a designated process prevents any allegations that one of you, for example, weighed in and you know caused somebody to be hired as opposed to going through the Apple Track process. That's fine. Just recognize you'll have to amend it as soon as Apple Track gets sold to some other entity that changes its brand. So. <laughs> the realist. <laughs> Those are my only comments. Can it be? Can we make it more generic now? Uh, I thought about doing it, but it, that, that's what its name is. You got to look for it. You look for it. You find it that way as a software thing is easily findable to people applying. So, so for now, it's fine. Okay. Just deal with it when that day comes. Okay. So let's take these one at a time. Um, hiring policy, anyone? 
No. So I entertain a motion to approve the hiring policy as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Foyle, second by Tillman. Any further discussion on section 200.3? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Shall I please call the roll? Riley? Aye. Foyles? Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gray? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Motion carries. Great. So thank you. That will um, streamline the process much, much better. And also, mm -hmm. we can weed people out you know, with the drug screening in case they're not uh, viable mm -hmm. candidates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next item is the per diem. Discussion. Any comments on the per diem? I guess I guess I have some concerns just on the, the fact that there are no receipts or any required on the per diem policy. Um, there doesn't also seem to be anything, you know, for a conference or an event where the meals are built in. And then as Dirk mentioned, we might want to look at the other side. I don't know if anybody else has comments or we want a table or I add to that. Um, the GSA requirements does allow, it requires you to take out any meals that are provided by the conference. So if there is lunch provided, that is deducted from the day. Okay. If it's $56, let's say. So $17, an example, is let's say is lunch. So it's deducted from that. So you are not being, you know. No double dipping. No double dipping. Okay. Okay. It's separate out. Lunch and conference. Yeah. Right. That, well, it's that taken was, off. Is that in here? It is not in there, but since this refers back to the GSA, those oh. it's those sitting in the GSA's policies. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see right here. I'm looking at it based on the GSA. Okay. And what is uh, Gary? Can you explain a little bit more? So, so if someone gets um, I don't know what's what's uh, forty dollars a day to do what they want. The receipt. What's the concern regarding receipts? Well, the thing is, they basically get their forty dollars and do whatever they want with it. You know, right. rather than get their forty dollars, buy their breakfast, buy their dinner, turn in the receipt, and return whatever's unused. Okay. So if it's not used, then we could overpay, I guess. In theory, or it could be in theory. Gary, would you feel more comfortable if we tabled this and and then made some recommendations and had conversations with staff about it, and then come back to it next month? Yeah, that would work. Okay. Great. I'm all for that. Feel free to call me or okay. email me with any questions, and I can respond to you, and okay. I can okay. reply to all mm -hmm. so everybody yeah. gets the same information. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, new business. Um, 15A, order the contract, Harold, or Hall, Corey Beach. Tower deck renovation project. And you have to say it three times fast. <laughs> oh, lucky I got it out. I once. got it. No. I, I was quite tongue tied up. <laughs> uh, as my memo uh, indicates, and the uh, letter of recommendation from PHN Architects, uh, we did open bids on the 10th of September for the renovation of the deck system that serves the uh, diving tower at the quarry. Two uh, bidders uh, submitted bids. Um, Hargrave Builders uh, from South Elgin was the lowest at 52,840. Uh, that is below our uh, budget number, which is very nice. Um, we are utilizing the same material uh, on this deck system now that uh, is being used down at the uh, boardwalk in the uh, at the Riverwalk. Uh, we, uh, the architects as well as staff. Uh, explored a number of different um, solutions for the for the system uh, the the material that we use now was the original kind of material and it has not lasted um, as we had hoped it would um, I, it's probably all been replaced at one point or another in the last 20 years um, so we're going to go with something that should last a much much longer period of time this hybrid product the wood and plastic resin product should last us for a great long time what is the product you're using it's called moisture shield uh it's made by a, a i think it's called aei as the company um but they make a, a quite a number of different kinds of products but it is a, a wood fiber plastic resin hybrid product composite product 
I believe they actually make uh, some of the material you can buy it at uh, Menards. That's more of the residential grade. This is commercial grade two by six material that's going to be used on the deck system. What's the warranty? Um, okay, three years, I believe. Three years? Mm -hmm. Does it come pre uh, with the color? You don't have to go. Back oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, there's no. Right. Yeah. Just we're going to be using a cedar deck. color and a mahogany color okay. um, for the stairways and the deck system. I only got two bidders. We were surprised. Yeah, uh, there were six, six that took out plans. I thought we were going to have a lot. I don't know whether it was the size of the project or the material. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, it is it is smaller, but going into the end of season, you would think that this would be. You one. know, we've had that issue for projects of all size across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Some remarkably low percentage of bids compared to the number of people picking up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's the I haven't, I, I can't give you an exact number, but over the last year or so, I've, as I've watched it, we usually get right about 50% bids to plan holders. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little higher, sometimes this one's, you know, sick, we, we missed it by one. So, yeah, I'm, I, I can't explain that to you. Why? Well, the only reason I ask, I mean, I, I know of three or four contractors, you know, from St. Charles down to Aurora that bid this scale project and it's oh, yeah. surprising and to me that they didn't bid. I sent this actually to probably another half dozen. Oh sure. Just said, hey, we've got this going. Yeah, no, I mean it's, 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 yeah, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Know, you, can, you, can, you can give it to them, you just can't make them submit. I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's very interesting to find out from you that it's kind of yeah, the trend right now that they're taking them out, they're just not bidding. People have issues with capacity at the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Um, so, in your estimation, was PHN's estimate high, or did we get a really good price? Um, no, I, I think um, I think we got a good price, but I think uh, we may have shot a little higher because we had a little more scope of work originally in our plan, okay. which we scaled back. Mm -hmm. Eric's guys took on a, a bit more of the project sure. than what we had originally um, planned. Right. Good. Which is really great. I yeah. mean, obviously, it saved us some money for mm -hmm. it goes to something else. Well, I just goes to show you how, you know, an adjustment for internal work can really save a significant Absolutely. amount. Absolutely. Great. So I entertain a motion uh, to approve the recommendation for the reconstruction of the diving tower deck at Hall Quarry Beach in the amount of $52,840 to Hargrave Builders of South Elgin. So moved. Second. Motion by Tillman, second by Riley. Any further discussion? When, when would this start? When is the expected completion date? Uh, by the end of November. Uh -huh. Yeah, into oh. November. Okay. Um, it's uh, there's a three week I think order time to mm -hmm. to receive the material, and right, once cool. they get it going, we're going to start right away tomorrow, getting right. the paperwork going with uh, Hargrave. So right. they should be ready to roll by the end of the month. I'm sorry. What was the product name again? It's called Moisture Shield. Moisture Shield. I like take it shields most moisture. Yeah. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And ironically, the timing of the construction project will happen during the Hunted Quarry, so I'll have an extra. Um, well, we hope, yeah, there yeah. might be some stuff yeah. going on. Ambiance to it. But, but no moisture. But no moisture. But no moisture. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Shielded from the moisture. At the pool. No moisture. You're the quarry with that. Oh, Laying two by yeah. six pieces. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two joints. Shall I please call the roll? Tillman. Aye. Riley. Aye. Gray. Aye. Boys. Aye. Callahan. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next item on the agenda is, I guess, Fox Billy Special Record. Or, or no, oh, we have policy no. discussion. Okay, I'm sorry. We have policy. Oh, two spots. Okay, so this is a first reading of the use of electronic devices by park board members for the governance manual. Mm. We have a very nice memorandum from Ansel Glink. Yes, basically it says, turn your phones off. <laughs> 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 it was up to yeah. Permanently? There's 47 pages, you know. <laughs> <laughs> turn your phones off. <laughs> yeah, that's what it comes down to, yeah. because it's, we're used to having being available for emergencies or whatever, and if you do that, you do that at some risk. Okay. 
so then somebody that, else. I included the memos that way. Um, yeah, you uh, didn't think it was any uh -huh. one person that alerted. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, so we will entertain that for next month. So, any comments? Uh, please read through the policy board and uh, provide any comments to Allison. Okay, next on my agenda is Fox Valley Special Recreation. Yes, um, Fox Valley Special Recreation Association is gearing up for the Northern Knights Tree Lights fundraiser in November. So um, if you are able to attend, please let me know because the Park District is one of the sponsors and has a table at the event mm -hmm. to show support. Great, and that's at um, Eagle? At the Hilton Garden oh. Inn in St. Charles. Oh, Hilton Garden, okay. Yep. So please let actually Shelly know. And when is that? What day? November 22nd. Is that a Saturday? I think it's a Friday. Friday. All right, great. Okay. So next on the agenda is uh, item number 17, executive session. So I entertain a motion to enter into an executive session to discuss personnel 2C1, uh, the only open meeting exactly. So moved. Second. Motion by Foss, second by Tillman. Do you have a stay? Any further discussion? Charlie Colorado. Boyle. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gray. Aye. Riley. Aye. All right, motion carries. We are going into executive session, and uh, we will not have any business to uh, attend to or formal action to be taken afterwards. So thank you very much for joining us this month. We will see you in October. Thank you.